What's up, guys? This is Mike Cashew, and I'm here with a few of the head coaches of Brute. I'm here with Jacob Hutton, Nick Fowler, and Adrian Conway. Uh, today, we're going to switch things up a little bit. We're going to talk about some of the common goals in the CrossFit community. Um, when we started Brute, it was 100% geared towards the competitive CrossFit athlete. And slowly but surely, we've gotten thousands of emails and Instagram messages and Facebook messages about uh, or from people with tons of different goals, uh, which led us to create all of our different programs. But we're just going to talk about all of those different goals that, that all of you have in the community and just give you a little bit of direction as to what your programming, nutrition, mindset, et cetera, should look like um, and maybe what type of program is best for you uh, as well as maybe some goal setting if you are having trouble with that. So again, when we started, Matt, Bruce, and I were, were – programming individually for some uh, athletes down in Louisiana under the company Bruce Barbell. And I, I basically took, you know, similar programming to what we use at Hacks Pack. And I said, Matt, in, or I thought to myself, instead of me writing everything, including the strength and weightlifting program, why don't I get this guy that's my really good friend and he's also been on seven world teams to create that weightlifting program for us. So I said, Matt, I want you to put weightlifting programming, uh, you know, AM Monday, AM Wednesday and AM Friday. And so Matt Bruce put four hours of weightlifting programming. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know. So he would put, you know, the hatch system, four hours of weightlifting program on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then the rest of the program was almost identical to the way that we trained leading up to the two games that we won. The issue with that is that these athletes were also doing a bunch of weightlifting in their Metcons. They were doing uh, a lot of running with, you know, obviously a bunch of eccentric load. And slowly we started to realize that these athletes just can't handle all of these programs slapped on top of each other. Um, we also met Nick Sorrell around the same time, and he started to develop his gymnastics program. And again, it was kind of like a traditional gymnastics progression with a ton of fundamentals, uh, you know, sometimes lasting an hour at a time. So we started to realize that we had to think about how all of these programs fit together. And that's when we started to really work together as a team. Um, about six months ago, we or I'll back up even more. We brought on Chris Henshaw for endurance. We brought on Sean Pastuch and Jeremy Todd for injury prevention, rehab, movement specialty, uh, Adrian Conway, Jacob Hutton, et cetera. Tons of great coaches. And we start, we just, we, we developed our system for how we program for elite athletes. And we started to work together as a, as a team in um, taking away as much as possible from the program without losing that stimulus. About six months ago, I started thinking to myself, like what, what, is, what else can we add to this package um, to make sure that our athletes have the absolute best team behind them possible? And what I realized is that I was the weakest link. I was, uh, I was more focused on the business side of things at the time, uh, marketing our different programs, leading our team, and I wasn't as focused on the programming. And so I felt rusty. I wasn't learning as much as I usually was in the past. And so I felt like I was the weakest link. Um, so I reached out to my friend Nick Fowler and we brought him on board and Nick was, I met Nick probably a year and a half ago and, and thought to myself like this, this guy is just brilliant. He has, uh, you know, he's about the most intelligent guy I've ever met in terms of programming. He's the perfect guy for the job. So Nick, can you talk to us a little bit about, um, where do we want to go with this? How did, how did, what was your first impression of, the brute program and how do you think this program has evolved over time? Yeah, those are, those are good questions. Um, so yeah, my first impression, I remember when, uh, I 
you know, when we initially chatted, uh, you know, a couple years ago, whenever you brought this idea to the table about, um, you know, Brute and how there's a multitude of coaches, right, this team that contributes to a program. And on, honestly, just to be honest, the, my first thought was like, man, that's really, really tough to do successfully just because there's so many cooks in the kitchen. I, I, and just that from my experience in the past, that's when, um, you know, athletes searching out their specialist, right, their gymnastics coach, their, their endurance coach, right, their swimming coach, their, their, you know, their movement coach in the box, right, their Olympic coach. And then you end up everyone putting their pieces in and you get, you get a shit sandwich, right? Like you get something that uh, doesn't make sense, right, ends up um, being either way too much, um, not organized. And so that was, you know, that was definitely – one of the first things on my mind was like, that's my biggest concern. And I know we, we kept talking, uh, for, for quite a while. And, and then, um, you know, uh, kind of, I think just through the evolution of, of learning more about what Brood is and, and, and the players involved and, and really coming on board with an open mind saying, okay, well, um, I, th- it, c- it could be really fantastic. Right. And, and that's the, the attitude that I came on board with. And, and since then, uh, it's blown my expectations way out of the water. I think that um, the way um, that the, the programs are organized with the coaches and everybody's input and expertise and the communication involved uh, makes it really work. And, and that's that's actually been one of the most exciting things uh, being part of the team is, is I get to talk with people like Adrian. Uh, you know, um, Nick Sorrell and Matt Bruce and just all these fantastic coaches and pick their brain about what's worked for them, what they've seen work, what doesn't work. Um, and I'm a, I'm, I'm a little bit of a geek at heart. And so I just, I love the knowledge and, and, and that sort of stuff. Um, and so, yeah, I think, uh, you know, in terms of how it's evolved, um, you know, my role is, is, is basically to uh, foster communication, uh, take, the expertise of of um, of everybody, and organize it in a way that to to ensure that whatever the intent for the cycle for that training session for that that one movement is is being protected and met, if that makes sense. So a good example is just um, well, like you mentioned it, right? Like if you have four hours of the hatch system on top of CrossFit, right? There's a lot of uh, conflicting things that are happening, right? And so. Um, yeah, and, and that's where um, I see my role is, is, is I get all this information and I need to kind of organize it, make sense of it. Um, and I do that with a lot of help, obviously. Um, and, but, but it's fantastic, right? It's, 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 yeah, like I said, it's blown my expectations way out of the water. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about these, these folks that their main goal is to make it to regionals or the games. Who should be following... A program like Brute, where you have an entire team, who should be following uh, maybe exactly what one athlete is doing, who should be following a free a free blog program. Um, yeah, just talk about that a little bit. Give me your opinion. What do you think, Adrian? Um, gosh, it's loaded. Now. I know. I know. A, lot of, a lot of stuff going on there. There's a lot of moving parts. Um, I think first off, I think if we take a look back at like what started this whole revolution is obviously the development of CrossFit.com. And I think like it it fired up a lot of people. Um, It changed a lot of lives and it dramatically obviously changed the way every aspect of the fitness community works and operates. And I think um, it gave birth to a lot of new things, right? So when CrossFit.com became popular, people started seeking after that. And then people found out like, oh, there's this competition that's going on. Like, so I'm going to show up to that and throw down. And if we look back even as early as the first CrossFit Games, it had what, three events or something? three events, um, and then the next one maybe had four. Uh, and then after that, we start to notice a dramatic change in like the way it's programmed for. And so I think that started a lot of the evolution of like what people seek versus like what they started with. So like um, CrossFit.com was like everybody's go-to for a cool minute. Like it was very popular. The seminars were flourishing. Like it was this, everyone was like, oh yeah, that's cool. Like I'm doing this CrossFit stuff and, and, and that's it. And like, everyone was blown away that like you could train for 15 to 20 minutes in a day at a high intensity and like see these phenomenal results. And now we've developed like this test that is testing for the fittest humans in the universe essentially. And the test is dramatically transformed throughout the years. And so that has allowed coaches like us 
to step in and offer a service that for what we offer is, in my opinion, unparalleled, not to toot our own horns, but like we do a great job of working hard at, at our craft. And I think that, you know, basically the point is the way that the games have transformed has transformed the way that people continue to train. Because everybody wants to like pursue the body image of a CrossFit athlete or pursue the capacity of a CrossFit athlete or like, wow, I'm gonna really, I'd like to make it there one day, even aspirations to, to train there. And so now we've got these other avenues that's like, hey, um, you know, I have goals of making it to regionals and what does that look like? Well, now we know that you can't just do one workout a day and, and do CrossFit.com training and expect to qualify for regionals. Um, and then it's the same capacity with, okay, I'm, I wanna be a CrossFit Games hopeful. It's like, well, okay, now we need to elevate your commitment, your recovery, your nutrition, everything to a whole nother level. Um, and it needs to be very specific to your needs as an athlete. Uh, we get people that come to us that have needs that are, that are you know, um, very unsimilar to each other's, whether it's mobility, flexibility. Um, some people need to dial in their nutrition. Some people need to get leaner. Um, but, <clears throat> back to more of what your question is hitting on, like who needs what program. Um, I think personally that's a very individualized approach and like you need to ask yourself, like what does that program offer for me? Uh, so right now it's like a very popular thing for people to either follow a website that's completely free, like where it's, and, and I'm not bashing free content because that, that, that is what spurred along this whole revolution, right? right? CrossFit.com still offers the best free content that you'll ever find. Mm -hmm. um, and but the bottom line is like, is that exactly what you need? And if you're going for GPP, and if you just want to function daily in your, reg in, in, in your everyday life better and be ready for anything, like CrossFit.com is for you. Mm -hmm. Like that's what you need. Right. You want to build community, go to a gym, follow that kind of programming. Um, but if you are that athlete that wants to go to regionals and like you're, you're close to maybe qualifying for the CrossFit regionals uh, out of the open, but you're like, hey man, I need, I'm going to have to improve like 65 spots this year. You need a coach that's going to tell you exactly what you're going to need to improve on. Right. Um, and obviously our program does that through the series of tests that we run for you. We test and obviously this is for us and, and we're going through the process right now, right? Like, evol like evolving our testing process mm -hmm. even. Like how can we make it more accurate? How can we make it better so that we know exactly what these guys need? Um, and we'll bring them that, that, those few steps closer to their programming um, or their, their goals that much quicker. Um, and then there, you, got your, you got your programs out there where it's just like a cookie cutter. Um, but it's a games athlete style template, right? right? Like there are athletes or websites that offer, um, and a very, very knowledgeable coaches are offering these, but it's still very general mm -hmm. or generalized. Um, and then you even got your, your athletes that are following like what other athletes are doing. And um, I think that's really cool if you're a really big fan of that athlete. Like mm -hmm. I think it's really cool to create a small community and like, yeah, like, hey, I'm doing exactly what so-and-so is doing is fun right. and I'm keeping up with their training. I can see exactly what they do. And you can absolutely get better doing that. No question, right? Like you can see there's, there's, gosh, I mean, and I think we're all humble enough to, to see this from, from our career and athletic background and experience. Like you can make a lot of athletes way better right. by, from following a general template. Right. Um, but is it exactly what you need? And is it getting you to the level that you're seeking to get to? And right. I think those are the questions that you have to ask with whatever, whatever program that you're following. Right. I, I mean, I think the biggest thing is that first you, you find someone that, is knowledgeable. Uh, they don't necessarily need a kinesiology background, but they need to have a background in, in coaching and developing athletes over time. Um, and if, if you have found a team or a person like that, then the next thing is consistency. Because uh, the best program followed uh, in, in piecemeal fashion is completely worthless. Um, it, you might as well just do random programming. So whether it's a free blog or it's you're following um, a, your favorite athlete or you're, you're paying someone one-on-one, -on -one, it's gotta be someone that's knowledgeable and just be consistent because programs, intelligently written programs are built that way for a reason. And there, there's a thing called periodization and uh, progression that if you don't stick to the, to the plan, um, you're just not gonna get the results as quickly as you might like. So, again, that's, that's how we started Brute, you know, catering to athletes that want to compete at the highest level and ideally make it to the games, win the games, etc. About a year in, we realized that we were, we were losing a lot of our members 
And also a lot of people were just scared to sign up for our program, all for the same reason. The, the problem was we don't have enough time to complete this or my body just can't handle this amount of work. And we quickly realized like a huge portion of the population, the vast majority of the population of people interested in competing uh, just don't have that amount of time. And that's when we, um, that is when we made our compete program, Brute Compete program. Adrian, can you talk a little bit about what you do with the games prep program and how you turn it into compete? Yeah, so um, I follow a lot of and play a lot off of uh, Nick Fowler's responsibility list for me. So like he, he goes through and he has a general template where we're creating a structured format for the athlete to progress forward. Um, obviously, an example is like games prep, like this is our off season right now. Um, a lot of the focus is if you are in the gymnastics group and that's your specific weakness, you're trying to, you know, create an environment and a training schedule right now so that we can quickly build up your gymnastics base, but we're also still focused on getting you stronger, right? Um, if you're in the endurance group, obviously it's baseline endurance work and um, a lot of my responsibility in each one of those three groups, the strength, endurance, and gymnastics is to basically um, interlace or lie in progressions that are very CrossFit based. And when I say CrossFit, I mean like the traditional Metcon style workouts that you'll see appear in the open um, or at regionals. And so a lot of times we'll be making plays on certain workouts, whether it be Fight Gone Bad, whether it be Fran, whether it be Helen, and we'll come up with structured variants, variants to versions of those workouts and progress athletes to peaking and testing those and retesting those. So um, that's lately a lot of been uh, my responsibility for the groups. Now in regards to to changing that to make it more compete style or for the brute compete group. Um, essentially what we do is cut out a portion of the accessory work. And sometimes this also includes a lot of what we would consider like the extra conditioning. Um, and, and the whole format and the idea was one, make our program more approachable for the everyday athlete. You know, people are looking for more than just a class workout. We can provide that by giving them this 60 to 90 minute window where we do um, structure their training on their weakness so they're implemented into a group, uh, whether it be the strength, gymnastics, or the endurance group. So they've got their emphasis and then we also play on that with, you're still gonna get your strength training, you're still gonna get your gymnastics, and you're still going to get your endurance work in each group, but it's catered to your specific needs. And the way we've condensed that is, obviously over time we start to understand like we need foundational strength training movements. We still need to squat, we still need to clean, we still need an overhead squat progression. This is for any and every athlete that we see, whether in the strength group or not. And we still need to lunge, we still need to create, um, you know, single joint movements uh, to create structure and balance for every athlete. So we try to see exactly what we can implement and include in the day-to-day -day training that's going to um, allow them the biggest physiological adaptation with the least investment, whether it be time or destruction of their body. Right. Do y'all have any guidelines? So people that are not Brute Compete members, not interested in joining Brute, but they, they, you know, they want to piece together some different programs out there or, or write their own programming. What, what are like the most important things to uh, keep if you only have 60 to 90 minutes? Um, how should you maybe structure your training without going into a terrible amount of detail? Yeah, that, that's a tough, uh, a tough question to answer. I think, honestly, it, you're going to have to look at yourself and see what your biggest priorities are. So if you know you have a good engine, uh, then, you know, maybe you want to take uh, the engine work, whatever that might look like, and, and just, um, you know, make sure it fits into your design enough to where uh, it's a, maybe a maintenance type of thing, right? And if, let's say, strength is your biggest priority, you're just not strong enough to um, you know, get to the level you, you need to compete at, then uh, placing a little bit more time, a little bit more volume emphasis on strength work uh, will, will kind of make the most sense, right? Now, it gets really kind of complicated when you look at the individual and then you overlace a goal and uh, life, life's constraints, right? So you have a job, you have kids, uh, you're going to school, um, you know, whatever it might look like, um, you know, we're limited by some just realistic you know, life constraints. And so 
Um, there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, and I think, I mean, what comes to mind for me is, is the one thing everybody should have is a coach, right? Um, and, and, and what I mean by that is, 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 is one place that things are filtered through, right? And so I think if you have, if you look at your situation and you find that you have three coaches that you're listening to, um, maybe the thing to do is, is go to one of them, ask them to organize things. And maybe that's you. Um, but even, I mean, programming, uh, coaching yourself is, is, I think, impossible to a certain degree, depending on your goals and kind of what, what level you want to compete at. But finding uh, one place that all the information is filtered in is probably the most important thing. Um, yeah, I mean, and there's some, some basic tests. I mean, there's enough information out there. Uh, for folks, uh, if we're talking about competing at the regional level, like you need to be strong enough, right? Um, if you, you know, if, if you're a male and you can't clean 230 or 335, like uh, chances are you need to get stronger, right? Um, and there's obviously a million other uh, strength metrics there, but um, l comparing yourself to um, the field of athletes, your peers at your goal um, at that level and then seeing where you fall short, right? So it, it definitely takes some, some testing, assessing, um, and hopefully, uh, you know, you have somebody in your life that you can, you can go to uh, and organize that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's where um, a lot of the templates out there fall short is because it's, it's literally a piece of paper with a bunch of stuff written on it um, with, with, no, with nothing else, mm -hmm. right? And, and so it's hard to really... Uh, help with that self-reflection, self-assessment, self-testing process um, when there's no interaction with people, mm -hmm. right? Or a, a, uh, a single, uh, you know, I, I always um, kind of refer to a coach's role as just being like the center hub uh, in a wheel with many spokes, right? And you can take that, uh, that idea into any situation, Right, whether you have an individual one-on-one -on -one coach, uh, whether you're a member of Brute, um, whether you know you're somewhere else, look at to see if you have that center hub. Mm -hmm. Right, um, all those spokes are important. Right, I mean, there's so many skills, um, whether it's um, you know improving your mindset, whether it's nutrition, uh, whether it's a swimming coach for skill work, um, but yeah, again, I just encourage that all that goes through like a center center point right. right and that's probably the hardest thing to to find somebody who's good competent and understands all those other pieces mm -hmm. another way to yeah go ahead sorry and i was just gonna say like everything obviously i agree wholeheartedly with everything nick's saying and like it's it's one of those things that if you're looking for a general layout of like a, what a training session could look like like with your question like mm -hmm. what what do we what do we need to do like how should we spend our time 60 to 90 minutes i'm not inventing this i read this in the crossfit journal right mm -hmm. like but it's like hey like spend 15 to 20 minutes of doing three to five sets of three to five reps of a foundational strength movement, squat, bench, deadlift, front squat, overhead squat, you know, a rowing action, whatever it is, weighted pull-ups, you know, vary those things. Spend another 15 to 20 minutes of doing some kind of metabolic conditioning with a combination of things, whether it be free weights, body weight, throw some rowing and running and box jumps in there, double unders, right? Um, where you're combining those skills and vary those things as much as you can in regards to time domains and stimulus of how it feels. And then also spend another 15 to 20 minutes on the tail end of doing interval work on a rower. Um, and they can be short sprints of like all out 10 second bouts with maximum recovery, or they can be, you know, three sets of 500 meters on the rower with uh, a minute rest and your goal is to hit a 85% um, of your best 500 pace. Like, if you can combine those three things into a general training day for yourself as an athlete, like, you'll be really fit. You'll have some good things going on physique-wise, and you'll be, you'll be pretty much ready for anything, I would right. assume. Right. Let's talk about some of the mistakes that people make when they're, like, programming and, and piecing these things together for themselves. So the first one that comes to mind for me is people need to be strong enough and when they're trying to get stronger, they do so through heavy Metcons. And I feel like I, I, I take this for granted a lot um, and, and assume like everybody knows this by now, but I, I step into CrossFit gyms and I see people that are, are new to the sport and they're trying to get stronger by doing these heavy Metcons. And that, we all know that'll work to a certain extent, but 
if you're still trying to make it to regionals or you're still trying to place on the first page in the open, then you need to be a good bit stronger. And just doing heavy Metcons or doing too many Metcons on top of your strength work is really going to blunt that strength and power development. So the right way or a, a, maybe a different, better way of going about that is in this off season, do your strength work, do your Metcon either several hours later or ideally on a different day and just protect the intensity of those strength and power development workouts. So what I'm talking about is that three to five sets that, that Adrian is talking about. Do that, then rest three or four hours, then come back and do your Metcon. Or do, you know, say an hour of strength work and skill work, et cetera. And then the next, the next day you come in and blow it out with a Metcon and, and conditioning and stuff like that. I know this is super... Uh, kind of generalized and stuff like that. But the, the kind of the, what I hope the take home message is, is that you need to be a little more intelligent with when you're talking about building strength, because it's very easy to think you're doing, uh, that you, you think you're getting stronger because you're doing a ton of work, but you're really, you're destroying your gains by doing too much uh, conditioning on top of it. What do you think of that, Nick? Yeah, I think, I think you hit the nail on the head. And I think, um, that's something I take for granted. I think that, I mean, to me, that's one of the first things I look at is, is what's the, the rest time between stressing different characteristics, right? Whether it's the aerobic system, whether it's joints, um, a whole bunch of different things. And, and, I, and I've seen it at every level. I've seen it with games athletes um, all the way down to the person just starting fitness, right? And, and it seems that this idea of, oh, if I do more, I'll get more out of it. Um, exists right and and if and I think it falls uh, we fall victim when we have a limited amount of time right if we have an hour 90 minutes there's this sense of urgency like I got to get everything into that that uh, that 90 minutes right um, and so I think it, it, it definitely comes down to to looking at and revaluing your uh, your recovery right recovery is very very important um and at times more important than than the training right uh it re lack of recovery is the biggest way to uh, to really just throw uh you know throw away all the potential gains and 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 um, this might lead into to some other conversation later but as as we um you know as we want to train more we want to get um you know maybe to the next level uh, if we're talking about competing, like if we want to make it to regionals, we know we have to be at a certain level volume wise and, and all this stuff. And so this idea of like, I'm just going to put more in and the places you can take time away from are usually uh, things like sleep, uh, downtime. Um, and so instead of creating more space in your life, you are taking uh, the valuable and the, maybe the little space you have in your life away. And, and so I think... Um, and, and we all kind of fall into that, um, I think, you know, if, if we're driven people with a goal, like uh, we're go-getters and, and we, we, you know, I think we're, it's very easy to, you know, be driven, but I'd just say value the, the recovery end of things mm -hmm. for sure. It's funny, I was re-listening to the uh, Justin Sua podcast, the Red Sox guy, uh, this morning, and he talked about we were talking about like Golden Glove winners and Cy Young Award winners, like the very, very top of the top baseball players. And he was he, he told me one thing that separates those guys is that they do the the boring minutia over and over and over again, right? So in CrossFit, that's the gymnastic skill work. That's the empty barbell work. In baseball, that's fucking hitting off of a tee, um, you know, going through reps in your head, all of that kind of stuff. Um, you can do a lot of that stuff. I don't know. I don't really know where I was going with this now that I think of it. Yeah. But, but, but it's the little <laughs> things that matter, right? Right, exactly. Uh, so I read something uh, from Active Life uh, the other day, and it said uh, they posted uh, something. Uh, it said, you work out like a professional athlete, but you recover like a participation yes. trophy athlete, right? Yeah. And I thought that was great because I think that, that like, our community falls, falls, in, mm -hmm. uh, falls victim to that a lot, you know? Yeah. Uh, another, another huge mistake 
I think people make is they want to get strong. And so, and so they spend half the year, quote unquote, getting strong, and then they get onto more of a competitor program. Um, we get that all the time. We get the question, hey, should I just do brute body first and then hop on one of the other programs? Sure, that's one way to do it, but is that the fastest way, most streamlined way of being competitive? What do you guys think of that? I think our sport is far too evolved to be able to rely on that kind of approach, honestly. Like at this point, if you want to consider yourself a top end athlete or give yourself an opportunity to be at the regional level, um, the top 10% of your engine work and endurance work needs to improve throughout the year. Mm -hmm. So you can't simply neglect that because you're weak. Mm -hmm. You know, um, yeah, the strength needs to go up, but then let's not forget that we have to like break down the test of our sport. And in the open, this past year specifically, the year before that, they threw a little bit of a wrench at us with the clean and jerk event as a separate score. But prior to that, and, and, and even this last year, like we've clearly seen that the test is much more based on your metabolic threshold and your ability to perform gymnastics consistently throughout a 10 to 15 minute window, mm -hmm. right? The loads were moderate to light. So I think that in the big picture, in the big scope of things, well, sure, that you definitely need to be strong enough to be at regionals and you need to prioritize making sure that those strength gains continually happen throughout the year. It would be a huge error in your approach to completely think that, well, you know, it's cold outside, I don't need to be running, or you know, I'm pretty good at gymnastics, I'm okay with where I'm at. Because every games athlete that you witness at the games is training everything all year. Yeah. And they're gonna be better at everything you watch them do in 2017 mm -hmm. that you saw them do in 2016, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I feel like you, get, you got to do a great job of one, trusting your coach's ability to monitor that like like what what we're saying is like hey but if you do too much conditioning you're going to set your strength levels back yeah. so how do you know how, how much is too much and um what is the right dosage uh and i think you that's why everyone needs a coach you right. know especially at this point in the game right yeah it's interesting i think if you if you told uh you know let's just say a, a ball player like a football player right and you're like hey uh, and in a well-established sport, you're like, hey, you're fast enough, so you don't need to run for, right. like, the next four, you know, four months, and we need to work on your, your, your strength development. Like, mm -hmm. that makes no sense. So why take that theory into CrossFit, right? right. Like, it's, it's um, yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head, Adrian. So it's more about tackling fuel is what you're, you're trying to tackling get. Tackling fuel, yeah. <laughs> we need to work on your tackling fuel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I feel kind of bad. Jake Hutton over here just got his thumb in his mouth, not saying anything. So we're going we're gonna to talk about the next kind of set of people that uh, we encountered. So probably, what, a year ago, we started to realize that we were having more and more people saying that, they want to look like this this vanilla gorilla that we have in all of our videos, doing the peck dancing, stuff like that. They want to look like Brooke. They want to look like Brennan Fjord, et cetera. And we realize, like, it's, it's actually kind of intuitive. Like, most people start CrossFit in the first place because they see people at the games and they want to look like those people. They don't necessarily want to snatch 300 pounds and do a bunch of swinging ring muscle-ups, although that's really cool. They want to have fun and they want to look better naked. And so we developed a program called Brute Body for those types of people. Can you, Jake, can you tell us a little bit about... Um, how people can look better naked um, and, and, you know, supplement their, their current CrossFit program to help them look better naked? Yeah, definitely. You mean so people just going to, like, a gym, going to class, things like that? Yeah. Nutrition's obviously number one. Um, I think... Abs are made in the kitchen. Yeah, that's true. And I think as far as building muscle, people... There's just so many people that aren't eating enough protein which is like the biggest shock when people get on brute body. And the thing is, does everyone need to be eating, let's say a, a gram of protein per pound of body weight? Absolutely not. But if you're training your ass off, you definitely need to. Right. It's gonna make you recover faster. Uh, you're gonna have a lot less soreness, but your performance is gonna go up. You're gonna feel better. You're gonna be in a better mood. Every, everything will be better that way. And, and um, it's kind of shocking for people when, they, when we put them on a diet 
and they they haven't been eating that much protein. Right. And it kind of was a wake up call when we say, all right, well at least track for three days and see where you're at, and then. We don't want to hop right into that, but if you're way off, then we'll just steadily build you into eating that much, you know? So right. um, I think that's the biggest thing. Start with your nutrition, track it for three days. Don't do anything different than you're already doing. Track it, see where you're at, and then uh, maybe find someone that can help you or uh, find somewhere where you can learn a little bit more about nutrition and kind of help yourself in that way. As far as training, one of the biggest things, one of the reasons that I got into CrossFit um, okay, so let's give my background a little bit. So nice. I met, so I'm, I was a, I was a college athlete and a college strength and conditioning coach, and that's what I thought I was going to do. But, um, I trained under some very, very good coaches that are in the NFL, and that was my background. I wanted to go to the NFL and be a strength and conditioning coach. I didn't was not a fan of CrossFit, like most of those guys are not, because mm -hmm. traditional, it challenges the views of traditional strength and conditioning mm -hmm. completely, right? Just as far as volume and the way the way you do things. Um, and then I met Mike, um, he was a, a strength coach with me and kind of saw, saw him doing CrossFit. I love to compete. And so we kind of started doing it together. Um, I didn't completely buy in, but I tried the open, had fun, did regionals. Anyway, fell in love with CrossFit, started to compete. And obviously now I really enjoy it. And then I started to go into some CrossFit gyms and kind of seeing their approach to programming. And a lot of them didn't really seem to have an approach. And I wanted to kind of get into CrossFit, open my own gym, and just do things more of like how we did them in the college strength and conditioning setting. Because really it is CrossFit. Like we're not doing Metcons um, in college, but it's more of a, you're going to follow a structured lift. Uh, we'll, we'll warm you up. You're going to follow a lift, and then we're going to condition you after. Or maybe like do some speed work, change the direction, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, which is something you can do every day in a CrossFit class. Warm everybody up, do a lot of lifting, and then do a Metcon after. Um, and if you, if you program it intelligently, then I think people will get more results. And what I've seen, even right now, so one of my best friends, I, he started going to a CrossFit gym, right? That's right by his house. And so I kind of started asking him what he's doing. And they're getting like 15 minutes of work done mm -hmm. in the hour of class. I'm just like, what? Right. It's just, it blows my mind. Like, it's not like, not like it's like a bad thing. He actually likes it because he goes there just, just to do conditioning and then he'll go lift after. Mm -hmm. But they do zero, like just lifting. Mm -hmm. Like they might work on a, an Olympic lift like once a week, but they don't do, they don't squat hardly at all. They don't follow any progressions. And I think um, a lot of CrossFit gyms are lacking that. Obviously not all of them. There's tons of great coaches um, doing great programs in their gyms. But there's a lot of people that, I don't know if they're lazy or it's just easier to get people through. But to change your body, I think getting stronger and putting on muscle is obviously the, the key thing. Does that mean you have to get a ton of muscle? No, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. But what's like, how are you going to raise your metabolism? Well, if you put some lean muscle on, well, I guess all muscles lean. If you put some muscle on, right. like you're going to burn more calories, mm -hmm. bottom line. Um, so I think some people are lacking that. And that's kind of what we, we want to provide people with something that, that they can do that's more super structured lifting progressions mixed in with CrossFit, mixed in with um, plyometric training, like dynamic effort stuff, stuff like that, how you would train an athlete, but with CrossFit. And that's kind of what we did with Brute Body. And I think that's what makes it different. It's fun. And a lot of the times it is people are used to going to class and doing something different every day, right? And so we'll get an email for people that have just started and be like, hey, what we, why are we doing the same stuff this week yeah. we did last week? And I'm like, oh, I tell them, well, the lifts are the same. Mm -hmm. um, we're following a progression. It'll, it'll change up in the next few weeks. Right. Um, the weight should definitely be different. So just look at the weights. You know, they should be moving up. Right. Uh, the tempo of the lifts are going to be different. Like if we're doing a back squat, like we... We vary the tempo a lot as far as controlling the eccentric, things like that. And then the Metcons are different every day. And I think if they would look at it from that perspective, um, every day they're doing a different Metcon. You know, mm -hmm. They're still doing stuff that maybe they were doing in class that was different, but the lifting is just more similar. And that's why some people that have only gone to classes, like the results are ridiculous. Right. Like they'll have a 50-pound front squat PR in the first five weeks you because mm -hmm. we retest it. And does that mean like, does that mean I'm an amazing programmer? No. It means they've never followed a squat progression. Right. And it's a pretty good squat <laughs> progression. <laughs> but they just, like they, they've, never pretty followed, good. <laughs> they've never followed a progression before. Right. Um, and they just are putting up crazy numbers, you know. Right. And then um, kind of to what you guys were saying about should I go into brute body first? No. If you want to be a competitor, but maybe find some progressions out there. Like find 
do some reading, find some really good progressions, and follow those with your programming mm -hmm. before you just hop into something where you think you might want to compete. And it's, it's easy to build your strength if you follow a progression, you know? So, and if you've never tried that, I would start there. Like maybe mixing that in with your CrossFit class, right. stuff like that. Right. Um, I'm just trying to think of some places we can send people. When I was, when I was learning about strength and power development, the, probably the number one resource was testosterone nation, Google, T nation hypertrophy work or T nation strength work. And some of the best coaches of all time, write Tons of really high quality, long, uh, long form content which explains like the, the philosophy and the science side of hypertrophy, strength, power development, as well as gives you specific uh, like rep ranges, set, set rep ranges, um, frequency of training, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I think the takeaway for, for folks uh, out there that want to look better naked, like f the, the, first off, I personally don't believe, and I think I think our whole crew is in agreement. Like, if you want to just get fitter, like Adrian was saying, CrossFit.com or like a, a a good CrossFit gym that does have a rhyme and reason to how they program, and is not just putting the hardest, most technical workout they can think of to make people tap out every day. Right? There's a very distinct difference. A lot of people think they're programming for games athletes at their local box and they're just not getting people the results that they want. That, that's one, that, that is a separate goal than what we're talking about right yep. now. What we're talking about is purely aesthetic and doing something like brute body, people, a lot of people, the majority of people that do that program come out and say, I'm in by far the best, the best shape I've ever been in my life. But the main goal of that program is to look better naked. And if that is your goal, then some things you need to think about, like Jake said, is eating more protein, um, track it first. There are tons of good guidelines out there on how much protein you need, you need to be eating as a strength athlete. Again, T Nation is a great, a great resource. Uh, Google Charles Poliquin, that's P-O-L-I-Q-U-I-N. He's got a ton of free info out there. Um, as well as you need to be doing at least a little bit of heavy lifting outside of Metcons, right? In a Metcon, you, you simply can't get the same response that you can lifting, um, you know, in, in sets of three to 12 that you can outside of a Metcon, right? The, you can, you basically, you can just go way heavier outside of a Metcon when you're not breathing as hard and when you have adequate rest in between. That's the fastest way to get strong. That's the fastest way to build lean muscle mass. The fastest way to lose fat might be the, the might be the Metcons. But if we're trying to, to lose fat and build muscle at the same time, then again, you, you need to be doing at least some of that lifting uh, and some accessory lifting outside of your Metcons. Next, we started to get um, we started to get a lot of inquiries from people that only wanted to work on weightlifting. We also started to get a lot of people that were only interested in weightlifting in general, and they didn't want to compete in CrossFit. Um, CrossFit, I think, is responsible for I don't know. 10xing the size of Olympic weightlifting, especially in the United States. And so we got a lot of people that wanted to learn from Matt Bruce and Jeff Whitmer, both, both of who were uh, world team members for the U.S., you know, inquiring like, how do, how do I compete at nationals? How do I uh, compete in my local meet? It's stuff like that. So we, com we um, develop Brute Ole. So we offer a program, uh, uh, you know, a cheap version of Brute Ole for people that only want to do weightlifting. And we also offer programs built for pure weightlifters. Again, we don't really believe in only doing a weightlifting program first and then hopping on a uh, a competitive program later. I, in my experience, people will get way, way stronger, and that's probably the fastest way to get stronger. But then they get to the competitive season, they get to the open, and they're just out of shape. The the strengths that they used to have are no longer strengths, and then they have to then catch up, 
do a ton of conditioning and, and hardly do any lifting. And so as they're trying to get back in shape, they're losing a bunch of their strength and they just have this kind of, uh, I don't know, seesaw effect, like a yo-yo effect uh, where they just can't find that, that um, fine middle ground of being the most competitive version of themselves. So um, that's why we created those programs. Let's see what else we got here. Let's, let's go over some um, common problem or, or, or questions that we get. Um, people that want to, yeah, what do we think about people that want to lean out first? They say their weight is their biggest issue. They want to lean out first, uh, or maybe they just want to look better naked. That's their biggest priority, and then get competitive. What is the best program for those guys? What's the best way of, of going about that? Or, or reaching that goal for those guys? So the, their number one goal is just to lean out? Um, I would say, I would say that, okay, they say that their biggest goal is to be competitive, but the way that they want to go about it is get lean first and uh, by doing something like group body and then switch to a more competitive program. Yeah, I think it just goes back to what you said initially is just dialing your nutrition, right? So that is going to, if you dial in your nutrition and start maybe on a compete program, then you're going to be able to keep all your skills up, work your endurance, work all the tools needed, and still lean out, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's where I'd start with, if uh, that was your main goal. Right. And it all, it all depends, I think, where you're at as an athlete as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Like, do you have, <clears throat> we talked about this earlier today, we have people on brute body that, um, I mean, they, they have goals to compete. I mean, we have people that left brute body that went to compete, right? They, before they did it, they probably could do like a couple pulps with their body weight, right? right? Well, in during brute body, they got way stronger. They lost a bunch of weight. They went from maybe being able to do a pull up to doing five strict pull ups with a 25 pound weight. We're talking about females, you right. know? And, they're just so excited and they've never done a muscle up and now they can do muscle, like multiple muscle ups. Mm -hmm. And then it lights a fire under them. Like, okay, now I'm ready to, to move up to the compete. And I think brute body can help you that way. But if you're someone that already has the skills and your body weight is the limiting factor, but you're good at CrossFit, definitely go to one of the competitor programs. Right. And just That's dial, a good point. Dial in your nutrition. Right. Yeah. So if you lack a lot of that prerequisite prereq strength and you're, overweight then maybe you need to then maybe your your kind of micro priority needs to be losing weight getting that structural strength yeah and brute body does have a lot less variance you know what mm -hmm. i mean so yeah. you're doing still doing a lot of varied stuff during the metcons things like that but like we were saying there's a ton of structured strength stuff and then one thing that is definitely lacking because usually there's not enough time in a crossfit gym in one hour to do let's say we're gonna start, maybe do some clean pulls, do a back squat progression, and then go through all the structural balance stuff after that. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are lacking that. So brute body, people are getting their, their lunge strength up, their hamstring strength up, they're balancing their bodies out. And that takes a little bit, it's gonna take 90 minutes, mm -hmm. or close to 90 minutes to be able to get all that done and then do a Metcon. Um, and so I think if you're someone that's lack, lacking that structural balance as well, and you've never really worked on those things, it could be a good place to start before you move on um, to a program like compete stuff like that. Right. Let's talk about um, like setting goals a little bit. I, I'm, I'm wondering, I, I get the question or we get the question all the time, like when do, when am I ready to go from compete to games prep or, um, you know, if I have enough time to do games prep, should I be doing that? Um, I personally think that you have to really question yourself as to why. So you set your goal and you say that you're, you, you, one of your biggest goals in life is to compete in CrossFit. I think you have to ask yourself why you set that goal in the first place. Is that something that you really feel in your heart that, you, that you're passionate about and, and that you're driven to do? Or is it just because you think it's cool, that's what your friends are doing? Um, and have you really thought have you really thought it through? If you, if you say you want to be competitive at the regional or games level, 
do you know what, do you really know what it takes? Do you know how many hours per day it, it takes training, recovering, uh, the sacrifices you have to make in social events, uh, nutrition wise, uh, maybe in relationships, et cetera, et cetera. I think a lot of people just say they set this goal and they say they, they want to do it. Then they really never spend the amount of the, the, the right amount of time thinking the whole thing through. And then they, they go in the, into the gym a couple hours a day. They don't get the results they're looking for. And then they end up sad, depressed. Um, it affects their confidence, uh, their self-esteem and, and kind of negatively affects the rest of their life. How do you guys think, um, yeah, do you have anything to expand on that in terms of like how, how to choose how, how dedicated to be? Yeah, that, that's a complex question. The first thing that comes to mind is, is well, I think about all the, the folks that I've worked with who at some point make a decision to change goals because they're not having fun anymore. And mm -hmm. I think that that's uh, being a competitive athlete uh, and competing at the regional level uh, and going on in the games is is a job, and and I think that um, you got to realize that the the coming in, putting the hours in the gym is can be the fun part, but it's everything outside of the gym that's going to make or uh, make or break you in terms of your goal. I think mm -hmm. right, um, and and I think a lot of people just don't realize that. I think that <clears throat> there's the 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 limelight, and that's just maybe with everything, right? Uh, you, the I don't know, like the social media limelight, like, oh, maybe the grass is always greener on the other side, or it's just the, the, the stardom that people just see the good stuff, right? But right. if you talk to a, a, a games athlete, and you know, everyone here can, can talk to this, right? Is that from the time you wake up in the morning to the time you go to bed, it's everything is focused around that. And, and if you don't have the, the drive, uh, and I, I think if you don't, if you if you hesitate in in the reasons you're doing this, you you won't succeed because right. it's hard. And and I think a lot of people don't talk about that, right? I think a lot of people don't talk about um, the mental resiliency, right? The the mental emotional commitment that it mm -hmm. takes to compete at a high level mm -hmm. in anything, really. Um, and that, and that's just been my experience, and 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 that's fine, right? Like if if you start down this path and you realize, man, this is just not for me, great, like. Let's find something that you love to do and, and you really enjoy. But, um, you know, the, the, the folks you see competing at the games, regional, staying on the podiums, you know, that's – you don't see the the 23 hours in those people's lives mm -hmm. that take – you know, got them there. Right. Yeah. And, and I think um, – I think it's completely right. Like, it has to be something that, that, that fuels you. It has to be your passion, right? Like, like very much a passion. I think you, you also said something, Mike, like – did you think it through? And uh, I mean, it's some. I, I I get catch myself saying it a lot. Like, did you think that? Did you think that through? Like, my wife probably. Yeah. Wants to smack me a lot. <laughs> and God knows I don't always think things all the way through. But from a realistic perspective, I mean, and and I bring this up a lot in our casual conversation because of the fact that as a check-in coach for Brute, I get a lot of correspondence with athletes that that will say things like, you know, coach, I'm, I'm just struggling to find motivation right now. And like, what do you do to stay motivated? And for me, like as a competitive athlete in 2015 example, like there was nothing that was going to happen in that calendar year that was going to keep me from making it to the CrossFit games as an individual. Like that's what I wanted to do. And I set out from the time that I had to sit out the regional in 2014. Like I just told myself like period bottom line, unless it's not in God's plan, which means obviously that's out of my control, but everything in my control, I will prioritize and structure in my life to make it to the CrossFit games, period. And so when people ask me those questions, like how are, how, how are you motivated? And like motivation was never a question for me and it never is on a day-to-day -day yeah, basis. Right. And if it is for you, then I think we need to take a look back now and step back and like really reassess where your goals are exactly right because if something really means that much to you you will be willing to do anything mm -hmm. to accomplish that and it will be 
what motivates you to get out of bed in the morning. And it will be the last thing you think about before you go to bed. It's like, hey, and sometimes those thoughts are just like, I really need to go to bed because I need to wake up early to do this work or, you know, whatever it is, or I need to get in this one more session. And so when people come to me with those like issues of, you know, they're kind of torn, like, oh, coach, I'm just not, I'm just not as motivated. Then I just have to go back and ask them like, well, why are you doing this? Like, why? You know, and if, if, you, if your why is to look better and, and feel better and you're looking good and feeling good right now, then I can understand why maybe you've hit a little plateau. So mm-hmm. do we need to go back and reassess like, what's really important to you right you know maybe it's your personal values of just like i like to work really hard okay if that's if that's the case and and you like to put in the work then every day when you finish training i want you to ask yourself like did i do everything that i could in this session Mm -hmm. to make myself a better athlete or did i expend every ounce of energy that i could and then if the answer is yes then be proud of yourself and your performance is you know it's gonna it's gonna be high on some days and low on other days but if you can confidently answer that question then i think you're doing the best that you can right i love that perspective well, that is about it. Can you guys think of anything else that we left out? Those are the common CrossFit goals. Um, guys, if you have any questions uh, about any goals that you have, whether or not you are interested in joining one of our programs, email info at brutestrengthtraining.com and we will answer any questions that you have. Um, also, if you're interested in all of our, the free content that we're putting out, whether it be podcasts, articles, videos, uh, we're starting to do these new challenges where we're giving away lots of gear and, and equipment and stuff like that. Go to our website and sign up for our newsletter and we'll keep you updated on all of that. That's brutestrengthtraining.com. Um, you can find the Vanilla Gorilla at Jacob Hutton 1. That's H-U-T-T-O-N 1. Nick Fowler at the Nick Fowler, that's F O W L E R, and at AJ Conway? Adrian, Adrian Conway. Adrian Conway underscore. Ooh, Adrian Conway underscore. Don't forget that underscore though. And you can find me at Michael Cashew, C A Z A Y O U X. Have a great day, guys.